Hello everyone. So uh, this is an important video at this moment of time for all the ACCA students. So uh, we all know that the June examinations has been cancelled in India and uh, the examinations for whoever have registered for June, all the students have been uh, given a refund to their ACCA My Account and uh, they can use that refund to utilize it uh, for uh, examination slot booking for September window. This is what we all already know and apart from that we are also aware that ACCA is planning to conduct in-house examinations that is private invisilation, online invisilation will be conducted where basically the student has to have a setup of minimum of Windows 7 and etc internet connection all that stuff which they will be explaining you the guidelines are already published by ACCA so you can write your examination from your home itself that is what is being under the plan and uh, the latest information is that uh, uh, for uh, the on-demand examinations like F4, F1, F2, F3. So uh, the ACCA is planning to conduct examinations uh, for uh, in-house exams uh, that is from um, July of 2020. But it is still under the planning process. The implementation is yet to be confirmed by ACCA. They have published that uh, from July window for F1, F2, F3 and F4 on-demand papers, they are planning to conduct in-house examinations, right? And for the rest of the papers uh, from F5 to F9, uh, the examinations in-house will be conducted for September window and for strategical professional papers, since it is a paper-based examination uh, for at least till 31st March of 2021, uh, we are still yet to get the confirmation about uh, how they are going to proceed with that. So since CV is not yet made mandatory, in-house examinations is a little bit uh, under discussion for uh, September 2021 window, right? Having said that, ACCA has recently published a PDF document which talks about what are the syllabus changes that will be affecting the students who have already enrolled for June 2020 and now writing under the September 2020. Since the window is changing. Will there be any syllabus changes and if there are any syllabus changes, what are those changes and how students are expected to cope up with those changes, right? So I'll open that document very quickly and I'll be explaining you what are the changes that have been taking place, right? So as you can see on your screen now, uh, this is a document which is released by ACCA, syllabus changes for ACCA qualification exams 2029-20 and 2020-2021. Uh, now, as we already know that, see the June examinations have been cancelled and uh, they are now uh, writing the examination for September 2020 until June 2021. That is the new syllabus, right? So, what they have given is they have summarized the entire syllabus of all the papers and they have noted which uh, subjects are having any syllabus changes and which subjects there are no changes. As you can see, most of the subjects are not having any syllabus changes. The major, pay, uh, the major areas where syllabus changes have occurred are basically PM, that is the F5, Performance Management, APM, P5, Advanced Performance Management, and SBR, Strategic Business Reporting. So these are the three papers where there are slight bit of changes. So first I'll start with F5. So for F5, Performance Management students, a new topic has been introduced to your syllabus, that is how big data is going to impact organizations technology related aspect. So how big data is going to impact the organizations? How can it be utilized by a consultant or by an analyst while performing performance evaluation of an organization, right? So that is the only syllabus change that is there in your syllabus. Only thing is that big data, its advantages, disadvantages, how it is going to impact any organization, how it is going to impact a performance evaluation consultant or an expert. As you can see here, are there any syllabus changes? In corporate law, there are no changes. Taxation, it is not applicable because as we know, uh, Taxation Finance Act 2019 will be applicable. I'll discuss about that as well. Financial reporting, no changes are there. Audit and Assurance and Financial Management, no syllabus changes are there. They have only changed the titles and uh, nomenclature of certain topic areas of your syllabus. That doesn't really matter for you guys, so you don't need to worry about that. Now going to the PM section, you can see that, see what's changing in performance management. You can see information technologies and systems for organizational performance. This is the section area of your syllabus and what has been changed A3D. This learning outcome has been expanded and clarified. Explain the use and benefits of big data 
and data analytics for planning, costing, decision making and performance management. So basically big data and data analytics has been added to your syllabus, right? And when we say data analytics, it doesn't mean that you should have working knowledge about Excel, Tableau, SQL, Oracle, big, uh, this, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Microsoft Power BI. We don't expect you to have knowledge about all the visualization tools as such. What we are expecting is you should know how they are going to impact the areas of your concern. You don't need to have expertise about data analysis, right? And then uh, there is a slight change in the heading that doesn't really concern you guys. So you don't need to worry about that, right? That is the first change in performance management. Since we are at performance management very quickly, you can see that taxation F6 uh, UK taxation finance act 2019 shall be applicable for whoever students are preparing from 2018 finance act please be very careful as such there are no major changes in the finance act 2019 to the best of my knowledge but you should be aware of slight percentage changes or deadline changes or due date changes or interest rates changes so any of such kind of changes will be very important for your examination so please pay attention to those areas and make sure that you are uh, having your preparation from the latest Finance Act 2019, right? Uh, you can go to uh, HMRC website UK and you can download this uh, Finance Act 2019 changes as well. If you want, you can text me on WhatsApp uh, and I'll share you that uh, document as well, right? Next one. Going back, uh, PM is done. Next. APM advanced performance management there are syllabus changes I'll switch on to there and it's literally uh, the same which has been happened in P5 uh, F5 as well that is basically adding big data data analytics internet of things and artificial intelligence to these areas except uh, apart from big data and data analytics two new concepts are also being added that is one is IOT internet of things and the other one is artificial intelligence and how it is going to impact your business basically RPA robotic process automation and other stuff. You can see here performance management information systems and development that is section C of your uh, APM content. Uh, the title of the syllabus has changed to recording and processing systems that you don't need to worry about. And this one process automation that is RPA robotic process automation and the internet of things IOT have been added. These are new additions to your syllabus area and similarly artificial intelligence and how it is going to impact your business and how it is going to impact the performance evaluation is added. And this is a new learning outcome, the use, on, use of pres uh, presentation techniques such as data visualization. Now, when, I, when we say data visualization, as I told you already, we don't want you to prepare the graphs. We don't want you to prepare the dashboards and power BI's and other stuff. How those are going to impact the business and how they are going to impact the reporting and how you should as a consultant utilize those data visualization tools to improve your efficiency and effectiveness that is what we are going to discuss here you can see here for september 2020 to june 21 exam year there have been some additions to the syllabus process automation iot have been added you are expected to understand how this influence the information and systems used by the organization similarly artificial intelligence you must uh, show how you uh, you must uh, demonstrate understanding of how organizations can utilize the artificial intelligence technology to manage process collect information and add value similarly this is the most important aspect that i was talking about see i'm just zooming in so that you can uh, have a better view the use on the use of presentation tools such as data visualization within management reports has been included although you will not be expected to provide or produce the visuals using these techniques you may be required to explain how such tools can be of use when reporting information at different levels of an organization you should only have an understanding of that and you should know how it is going to impact the business and you as a consultant you don't need to worry about how to uh, use those tools you don't need to learn tableau and power bi and other stuff okay and they have also given you uh, technical articles relating to these changes recently added technical articles which we'll be discussing in detail in our advanced performance management apm classes right going back then there are certain small changes in advanced audit and assurance which I am not going to discuss in this session because I am no expert in audit and advanced audit and assurance. So I will be uh, sticking to my areas or my uh, concerned uh, syllabus changes right. So next one is strategic business reporting as you can see 
this is one of my four subjects so we'll go to sbr and we can see that certain changes have been introduced the major changes being which is already there previously as well the conceptual framework 2013 is not applicable anymore conceptual framework 2018 shall be applicable for all the examinations right so please be very careful if you are learning the definitions as per conceptual framework 2013 please make sure that you are changing your uh, preparation strategy you have to prepare as per conceptual framework 2018 that is the first point and second point is that uh, new technical articles have been re uh, released in relation to bitcoins and cryptocurrencies that has been already tested previously in the recent examinations but uh, you know still it is a very hot a hot topic area for discussion because uh, does cryptocurrencies or uh, bitcoins and uh, ethereum and other uh, libre coins etc etc all these cryptocurrencies that do they come under the category of cash and cash equivalents most of the students think that that they are also currency only they are also cryptocurrencies now they are also cash equivalents no my dear friends because you have to go back to look at the definition of cash equivalents under ias7 ias7 says that cash equivalents are basically uh, those items which can be converted into known amounts of cash with less probability of changes in the value cryptocurrencies values keep changing in the market so they are not convertible into known amounts of currency without any price changes or without any value changes there are value changes so they will not be treated as a cash equivalent rather they should be treated as an intangible asset as per ias 38 so these clarifications are already given in the technical article so please make sure that you are referring to those technical articles right also uh, due to this unfortunate event of covid 19 creating havoc across the world what you need to understand is as an sbr student this is going to raise so many issues so many concerns in relation to the reporting right so for example ias 37 provisions need to be calculated ias 38 intangible assets you need to check their fair values and other stuff ias 16 fair valuation ifrs 13 fair valuation ias 36 impairment losses will be having a major role ias 2 inventories uh, slow moving goods and uh, cost or nrv basis calculation nrvs might be reduced in the market right so ias 19 employee benefits might be changed the life expectancy of the people will be changing or some um, such would unfortunately some of the employees might have been passed away due to this covid 19 uh, coronavirus issue so how to deal with that kind of settlements and curtailments and uh, plan amendments etc for uh, employee benefit schemes so all these etc etc there are so many as well we have already shared articles uh, to all our sbr students on uh, what are the major changes that uh, happens in the reporting segment or what which standards get affected by in which area so all the analysis has been already submitted to all our students of SBR. If you want that, as I said earlier, you can contact me on WhatsApp and I'll be able to share the documents with you guys if you need. Now, so uh, basically these are all reflecting your current issues aspect of your SBR uh, syllabus. As we already know, SBR one question is mandatory to be expected from the current issues topic in SBR international variant, right? So in the current issues aspect right now, two areas are hot topics one is artificial intelligence cryptocurrencies bitcoins blockchain etc etc the technical side of it and the second one is how this covid 19 situation is going to impact the financial reporting these two are the hot topics for september and december window at least at least september 2020 and december 2020 window these two hot topics are very very important so students can expect a question out of these two syllabus areas pardon me you can see here so uh, what's changing in this uh, sbr strategic business reporting is that discuss and impact of current issues in corporate reporting the learning outcome may be tested requiring application of one or several existing standards it is also likely to require an explanation we have already discussed all of this you can see the examples cryptocurrencies natural disasters like covid 19 these are all syllabus areas that are going to be tested examples that are given are accounting policy changes materiality defined benefit plans amendments curtailments and settlements of ias 19 employee benefit schemes then management commentary this is also a technical article that has been published very earlier then sustainability reporting gr4 and again gr4 also i have to explain you guys something here 
uh, GR4 guidelines are also no more applicable because global reporting standards are being published. As we are speaking from June 2000, from July 2018, all the reports that are prepared post July 2018, global reporting initiative GR4 guidelines are no more applicable. Global reporting standards are applicable. So please make sure that you are updated with that knowledge as well, right? So that's relating to SBR syllabus changes. So I have covered F5, P5, F6 taxation and uh, SBR syllabus changes. I'm unable to cover the advanced audit and assurance syllabus changes because as of now, I'm not taking advanced assurance, advanced audit and assurance classes. So I'm not aware of the syllabus changes as such. So I have no idea about it. So I'm not going to talk about that. So if you want, I'll just open that and I can uh, share it on the screen. That's all. See, I'm just leaving it on the screen for you guys. If you want to see the changes, you can see. But as I told you earlier, I'm not an expert in this area. I haven't dealt with advanced audit and assurance classes till now. So I'll, I'll not be able to, uh, you know, give any out, output on that particular aspect. So with that, uh, I would like to end up this particular video. So I hope this has been informative for you guys and this has provided you all the in, uh, changes that are happening and what are what is expected out of you or what is required out of you. So the only thing that I would like to say is that stay safe. Don't let your uh, environment or don't let the lockdowns or don't let the global market scenario affect your knowledge and affect your education. Keep studying do mock examinations, do exam kits, do multiple revisions. Use this window to, uh, you know, kind of improve your knowledge, improve your skills, give multiple papers in September window, try to, uh, you know, capture as much good as possible from the scenario, right? Chalo. Uh, as you know, I'll always be there to support you guys on my on uh, WhatsApp. You can contact me on WhatsApp. Uh, I hope uh, you guys already know my number for people who don't know my number. You can uh, get it in the description 94911-43432 plus 91 is the India code. So you can text me on WhatsApp. Please don't call me. I'll not be able to answer your calls. Just leave me a WhatsApp text. Whenever I'm free, I'll be able to reply. Right. Thank you guys.